imagine neuroscientists are? Analytical. Caring. Complex. Meticulous. Imaginative. Detail-oriented. Full of wonder. Insightful. Precise. Sexy. Patient. Driven. People who are interested in what makes us human. Some of those are definite hits, some maybe less so. (laughs) I think I heard sexy. I'm here for it. They nailed all of the different features that I think make scientists generally. People got it pretty spot on. Many of these descriptions are things that I aspire to be. I'm not a neuroscientist, but I'm interested in the field because as I age and stare at the end of life, I am reminded that uh, one of my grandmothers had Alzheimer's. And I believe that neuroscience is just beginning to understand dementia and Alzheimer's. If I could design an experiment for a team of neuroscientists, it would be looking directly at why, in dementia, we lose memory but do not lose imagination. Oh, that's so good. I didn't know that. That is so good. I would really want to know the overlap between the two of those. Yeah, this is really fascinating. You know, one of the other things with dementia is that you lose more recent memories and you actually, you know, in a lot of cases, people will have this remembrance of a time before. One of the things I always struggle with is coming up with a a measurable imagination outcome. I'm not a neuroscientist, but I'm interested in the field because I would want them to look at the effects of gun violence and like people growing up. Like for me, for example, you know, I was around a lot of gun violence growing up. And so like what, how does that affect you in your adult life? Wow, this is really... Yeah, I think that is a very pressing issue. There's growing appreciation for the environment in which one grows up generally. Stress can rewire your brain. Stress can really affect the way that you interact with the world. I know there have been decades of people studying the effects of stress in early development, but I think that is such a unique experience that needs better questions to approach it. And and I also think that this is an area of research that is rich with opportunities to change uh, policy. I'm not a neuroscientist, but I'm interested in this field because my first job as a science writer uh, was working as an editorial assistant for uh, the neurosurgery department at University of Maryland. And ever since then, I've retained an interest in the field. I would say the number one question for me is, what are the brain structures and processes that enable us to create and maintain a coherent sense of self across our lifetimes? In other words, what allows me to know that me is me? Uh, Ah, yeah. Mm. Wow. What allows me to know that me is me? One of the great driving questions of neuroscience, I think. I have this gut feeling that humans are using language for identity signaling. I don't think it's centralized to one part of the brain. It's sort of like this evoked property of everything working together. As we have all of these new technologies developing, I think we're starting to be able to do experiments that we can sort of move forward to answering them. You'd have to bring in people with all sorts of academic backgrounds, philosophers, neuroscientists, of course, psychologists. But I mean, if you can figure that out, that would be something really special. I think we just need to ask the public more for their input. Like, that's really good. I hear these neuroscientists responding to ideas from the public, and it really makes me think about neuroethics. So what's unique about neuroethics is that it fundamentally concerns our sense of self. The brain makes us who we are, and so altering the function of the brain can change who we are in ways that other kinds of interventions don't, whether it's things like deep brain stimulation, brain-computer interfaces, powerful technologies that have a lot of potential to really help people, but can also come with 
unintended consequences that might include affecting someone's sense of self. I think there are also some really interesting issues around defining wellness and illness and who gets to define what brains are in need of intervention and what does that intervention look like? Does that serve the best interests of the person whose brain that is? Or is that something that society is maybe imposing on them? And then, of course, issues of equity and access. You know, how do we make sure that all of these advances aren't just perpetuating existing inequities? Are there ways that we can use neuroscience and neurotechnology to actually start to reduce some of those inequities and and actually serve as a, a vehicle for pursuing greater equity and justice? I think that the public very often feels very distant from science. Because, I, you know, neuroscientists, I can imagine, live in a very, um, they would probably live in a bubble. If neuroscience was driven by the public, there would be a lot more arguing, <laughs> more than there probably already is. And perhaps neuroscience could get freed of stereotypes, bias, Lots of givens. I think they would have new ideas. Maybe the research would be more useful because people would be concerned about things that are affecting their daily lives. I believe that neuroscience can only be improved by more exchanges with the public. This resonates very deeply, and I think it's also very inspiring. These are things that I've been thinking about quite a lot. It's good for someone like me to hear this kind of thing, too. Um, bit of a, a call to action. I get so frustrated sometimes talking to my colleagues or other people who are neuroscientists and just how much we as a community believe that what we're studying is so important, other people must also believe this. We're in our labs, we're kind of head down, working, and you won't know, you know, what the value of your questions or what the value of your work is if you're not really speaking to that end person. So I think that's incredibly valuable and, and I love to see more of this. I like what they said about there be a lot there being a lot more arguing. Um, I think that's the case, but I think that's worth it to figure out how to ask the right questions and get the right answers. <laughs>